Rosie Cummings, present for. And would Council Member Herman please lead us in the invocation and the pledge? We come together this evening to discuss the issues that confront our city. May we always seek the wisdom to do things that reflect our concerns for the people whom we represent. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Next, we have a presentation by Kelly Nyford regarding the ESRI Award for Lakeshore Redevelopment. Thank you very much. Um, I'm here today with some exciting news um, that the uh, City of Oshkosh was awarded for some of the work we've done on a project. Um, I'll start the slideshow here. Okay. Jake's going to help me out with that. Um, just some background. Uh, the city has been working on multiple plans with um, House Seal Levine and Associates out of Chicago. Um, some of those include the Sawdust Plan, Imagine Oshkosh Plan, uh, the Corridor Plans, and then also the Lakeshore Oshkosh Ave Redevelopment Plans. Um, so the House Seal and Levine were associ or Associates were presenting at a conference, and um, some ESRI employees. ESRI is a type of GIS that we use, the program we use to make maps. Um, they heard the presentation and they were using our projects as part of the presentation. Uh, they heard the presentation and uh, they said they'd like House Seal Levine and Associates and the City of Oshkosh to submit um, um, information to be considered for a SAG award. Uh, SAG is uh, Special Achievements in GIS. So it's a very, very, you know, honorable award um, that people from all over the world try to get this award. Um, typically for a SAG award, uh, an employee of ESRI has to nominate you and um, they gather your information and then the owner of um, ESRI, Jack Danger Mound, which is a privately held company, um, he chooses the uh, um, gradual um, award winners and out of that there's 175 that win with over 100,000 um, ESRI clients around the world. So it's a very big honor. Um, we um, applied and we were chosen, so we were very excited. Um, Mr. Dangerbound loved the fact that we use so many different types of GIS um, for so many different types, um, parts of our project, including public outreach, um, showing maps to the public, um, gathering data with our business analysts, and um, putting it on a map, and just, it was just really, it was an all-encompassing effort, so he was very excited about it. Um, on the website, and it looks like I have my GIS up here, I'll quick, or my PowerPoint. These are just, um, we were on their website and um, showing that we had won the award. And uh, this is a picture that we, oh, I apologize, it's not coming up. <laughs> I have it here. Um, we won an award and at a special award ceremony, and uh, we had our picture with him. And, um, and maybe I'll have Jeff, so somebody hold the award here. Um, and during the um, award, he specifically mentioned Oshkosh during the ceremony, so he really, really liked our project. And um, when we had our picture with him, he um, said that he, um, you know, loved our project and he wanted to come to Oshkosh to, for EAA sometime. So we said, come on, you know, over, we'll, you know, welcome you with open arms. Um, so the city received recognition throughout the conference. Um, and it was just great publicity for the city, great promotion. A lot of ESRI employees knew about our project and were very excited about it. And um, I did a podcast to talk about it, so that will be rele uh, released in the near future. Um, another surprise was um, uh, Halsey Levine and Associates, they made a kind of a map that showed our project and kind of different aspects of it. And um, they can submit this map, to, it's called the Map Gallery. It's hundreds of maps um, at the conference. And uh, ESRI employees go around and vote which one they like the best. And um, ours was voted first. So another you know, exciting award for us too. But um, there was a lot of city staff included in the project. Um, Jeff Now in the planning department, Mark Lyons and Am Dorn in our IT department there here with us. Um, Darren was also a big part of it, um, our engineering staff. Uh, was definitely a huge part of it, and they're still working on it, you know, making those maps a reality and how to put, you know, actually into plans. So 
Um, the conference itself was amazing. We learned a lot of things. And um, we just want to show you the award that we received. And um, thank you for your continued support with GIS. And we're excited to show you what else we can do. And sorry the PowerPoint didn't work. It would be a lot of great For pictures. a graphics <laughs> award, it's kind of tough not to <laughs> brag without the graphics. But we'll, well, get, we'll get it I'll for email counsel. it to you. We'll get a, we'll get a nice yep. link for you. We'll, we'll, put it on, so, we'll get yeah. it on the website. Thank All you. Right. Next, we have a proclamation for Civility Month. And I believe we have someone here to accept that. The city of Oshkosh is known as a friendly, welcoming community that serves as a destination for many due to its status as Wisconsin event city. And whereas the city of Oshkosh offers an exceptionally strong quality of life that attracts individuals and organizations to live, work, study, and enjoy the beauty of our immediate surroundings. And whereas the Oshkosh Civility Project, founded in 2010, is based on the work of Dr. P. M. Forney and his book, Choosing Civility. And whereas on June 14, 2011, the Oshkosh Common Council adopted Resolution 11-270, declaring its support for the Oshkosh Civility Project and incorporated its principles into council's operating rules. And whereas the Civility Project has been active and engaged in community, regional, and broader efforts to promote understanding and awareness of how communication patterns, patterns impact others. And whereas the Civility Project is supporting an initiative during the month of August 2018 to advance the cause of civility and the shared understanding of the importance of our actions and conduct. Now therefore, I, supposed to be Steve Cummings, but I'm not <laughs> Steve Cummings, Lori Palmieri, Deputy Mayor of City of Oshkosh do hereby proclaim that the month of August 2018 shall be known as Civility Month in the City of Oshkosh. That people are encouraged to reaffirm the principles of the Oshkosh Civility Pledge which states, we build a stronger and more diverse community by actively sharing our ideas and opinions with others in thoughtful and considerate ways. By practicing this basic commitment to civility we learn and grow from one another, even in disagreement. Sue Panik, would you please accept this? Uh, yes, I'd like two other members of our civility group to come up. Uh, Laurie, we also have a proclamation to prevent, present. In our eight years, we have honored four people with a champion of a civility award. Former Mayor Burke Tower was one, and the last was Stan Mack, and today is Sue Ponick. She does not know that. So we have our own clock. We have something right here. Okay, I'm dressed like this because I just got off to stuff the truck. <laughs> and I well, said, good. Truck. We stuff a UPS truck. Yeah, we. And did you we stuff it We don't mess too? around. We did pretty okay. well. There you go. This, this will this will be brief, but it's very important. Gotcha. A select few individuals have distinguished themselves in service in support of these efforts of civility. And are we all here? Where are we going? That way. Oh, there's our man, okay. <laughs> there you go. And this award is being presented to Sue Ponick through her leadership and advocacy as a member of our core team. Sue has helped our community to earn recognition as a friendly place with a heartfelt commitment to the practice of kindness <laughs> and thoughtfulness in our interpersonal interactions. Upon her retirement from the Oshkosh Area United Way, which is not today, obviously, <laughs> Uh, we also properly recognize and commemorate her service to our community through the wonderful commitment she's had to her work at the United Way. So, Sue, a pleasure. Awesome. You know, if anyone knows me, you know I'm all about collaboration, and you can't do collaboration without civility. So, That's thank true. you very much. And you have a bag to take it home. <laughs> thank you very much.
Next, we have citizen statements to council. It's the first opportunity. Citizens are to address the council only. Statements are limited to five minutes. Must address items that are not listed on the council meeting agenda. Are limited to issues that have an impact on the city of Oshkosh. And the common council may address at a future meeting and must not include endorsements of any candidates or other electioneering. Pam, do we have anyone registered for citizen statements? Yes, we do. Jade Daughtery, 11 Canna Court. Thank you. I'm Jane Doherty from 11 Canna Court, and I'm here tonight to acknowledge that a new item has been added to Oshkosh that adds to our quality of life. I moved here in 2000 and I was shocked to discover that a city this size did not have a Toastmasters organization. So I was more than delighted when I saw in the paper a few weeks ago that Water City Speakers Group under the auspices of the International Toastmasters has started here in Oshkosh. Yes, it's taken 18 years, but Toastmasters is here. And I'm here to vouch that I participated in the Toastmaster program for communication and leadership. And I found it very beneficial in not only my professional life, but in my personal life. The Water City Toastmasters, or Water City Speakers Group, they meet at Fox Valley Tech, Riverside Campus, and their meetings are the first and third Monday of the month, 5.30 to 6.30 in the evening, room 115. And it's not necessarily for students, it's for anyone who wants to improve their ability to communicate and lead. And I thought, what better opportunity? It helps people in staff meetings at work, if they serve on a community board, if they serve on even a church committee or participate in a civic organization. The skills that you can practice in Toastmasters helps you to be a better speaker and a communicator and leader. And I was also thinking with new businesses being developed and expanding and coming to Oshkosh, there's going to be a need for good communicators and leaders. And what better resource than to have a Toastmaster organization in our city. So I'm here to speak on behalf of Toastmasters and I strongly endorse the, the, the good that can come from participating in Toastmasters. Thank you, Jane. Thank you. So add that to the quality of life, Toastmasters. Duly noted. <laughs> Next we have uh, our consent agenda items. Pam, is there anyone registered to speak um, for any of the consent agenda items? No one is registered. Bring it back to council for motion and a second. So moved. Second. Discussion? Can we please take the roll? Herman? Aye. Allison Osby? Aye. Mugerauer? Aye. Paul Mary? Aye. Carried four. No items removed from our consent agenda. We'll move on to pending resolutions. Resolution 18-422, approval, approved final plat known as Pickard Estates, Phase 1, North 3300, Block of West 9th Avenue. Plan Commission recommends approval. Is there anyone registered to speak? No one is registered. Bring it back to Council for a motion and second. So moved. Second. Discussion. Can we take the roll? Herman? Aye. Allison Osby? <clears throat> Aye. Mugerower? Aye. Paul Mary? Aye. Carried four. 
Next is 18423, approve initial resolution for special assessments for utilities, sidewalk grading and graveling, concrete paving, terrace trees, and street lighting for Pickard Estates Phase 1 North 3300 block of West 9th Avenue with signed waivers. Anyone no registered? No one is registered. All right, bring it back to council for motion in a second. So moved. Second. Discussion? Can we please take the roll? Herman? Aye. Allison Osby? Aye. Mugerauer? Aye. Paul Mary? Aye. Carried four. Next resolution 18424 accept and approve waiver of special assessment notices and hearing in connection with improvements, Pickard Estates, Phase 1, North 3300 block of West 9th Avenue. Anyone registered, Pam? No one is registered. Bring it back to council for motion in a second. So oh. moved. Discussion? Can we take the roll? Herman? Aye. Allison Osby? Aye. Mugerauer? Aye. Paul Mary? Aye. Carried four. Resolution 18425, approve final resolution for special assessments for utilities, sidewalk grading, and graveling concrete paving, terrace trees, and street lighting for Pickard Estates, Phase 1, North 3300 block of West 9th Avenue. I'm sorry, that was supposed to be 426, wasn't it? Yeah. No. Um, approved no, developers. No, 425. No, it's 425. We are on 425. Okay. My apologies. Uh, with signed waivers. And do we have anyone registered on the waivers? No one is registered. Bring it back to council for motion and a second, please. So moved. Second. Discussion? And take the roll, please, Pam. Herman? Aye. Allison Osby? Aye. Mugerauer? Aye. Paul Mary? Aye. Carried four. 18426 approved developers agreement, Pickard Estates, phase one, North 3300 block of West 9th Avenue. Anyone registered? No one is registered. And bring it back to council for a motion and a second. So moved. Second. Council member Herman. Thank you. Um, Darren, if you could just, I don't wanna put you on the spot, but um, developer agreements we've had some issues over the years um, this is a whole new subdivision mm -hmm. uh, maybe actually Lynn might be the one to speak on it a little bit um, we have all the T's cross I's dotted so that there's no issues coming back to us with this development I know it's uh, this is the third reading mm -hmm. third time it's come back to council so there's been some issues out there but um, I'm just thinking again of the issues we had out on, on the, the northwest side of the city with that subdivision and a couple other ones where the developer agreements were kind of loosely tied and uh, they went into bankruptcy and things like that. So yeah. We have the financial guarantees in place. We have a letter of credit um, for the uh, private, privately paid portions of this. Right. We have, um, in this case, the delays were caused by some of the um, issues with the title of the property and just working that out and that took longer to work through okay. than they had anticipated it wasn't it wasn't issues so much with with the financing itself it was they wanted the banks wanted those issues cleared up so that when they issued the financing it it was all the title was all clear so that that was kind of okay. the hold up on it all right I just see on page four the payment for city services that they will pay uh, cash payment part any city services so it looks like we have a, a pretty tight contract here and we shouldn't have any issues I just wanted to <laughs> make sure that everybody's aware that um, you know when we do these developer agreements that they're they're really tying a developer to committing to what they said that they're going to commit to and not leave the property owners that buy lots in those subdivisions hanging because that's what's happened a couple times in the past so just want to make sure that uh, we don't have those issues as this development goes because this is it's really extending us to the very far edges of the city, pretty much. Um, South of Clareville Road, just about, so. Okay. All right, that's all my questions, thank you. I guess as a follow-up to that, uh, do we also have a map to show um, just where this is located for general should public purposes? Yep, should be one in there. I know there's one in the packet. Yeah. Just 
Jake have something up there? Yeah, I think you could just give us a second, maybe we can get on the screen for folks at home. As soon as Jake can pull up, as soon as Jake can pull up, this is uh, this is on the north side of uh, Ninth Avenue, uh, just about a quarter mile uh, east of Clareville Road. Uh, the other nearest uh, subdivisions are kind of to the south. Linden Oaks is to the south. As soon as it gets pulled up, we've had it on the agenda a couple of times, and it's kind of like the drum roll, right? We're kind of waiting to see what what this relates to, so. If, Maybe if we it could would just share it. If it would help the council, we have at least one more item with Pickard Estates. Yep. So if you want to give Jake a few moments to find it and we can and bring it back. You can keep rolling with, <laughs> All right. with the items. So did we have any further discussion mm -hmm. on four two six? No. Pam, could you please take the roll? Herman? Aye. Allison Osby? Aye. Mugerauer? Aye. Paul Mary? Aye. Carried four. All right, and one last of the new or of the pending resolutions. Uh, 18427 approve long term maintenance agreement and stormwater management facility maintenance agreement for Pickard Estates phase one. Anyone registered on this? No one is registered. Bring it back to council for motion in a second. So moved. Second. Any discussion on this particular item? Can we please call the roll? Herman? Aye. Allison Osby? Aye. Lugerauer? Aye. Paul Mary? Aye. Carried four. Okay. Must have got damage in the roof. Okay. <laughs> oh, there we have it. Yeah. Um, as, as you can see, here's Ninth Avenue, here's Clareville. Uh, this is the subject property. Here's a, here's a city subdivision over here to the south. Uh, Casey's Meadow, that's, that's the Rutenberg or Bruce subdivision down here. Whitzel Avenue up here. So, yeah. Could you, you move that down a little bit, Darren? Oh. This down? A little more. No. Yeah. Okay. There you go. Yep. Oh, there sorry, we go. Sorry. Oh, there we go. Sorry. All right. So, yeah. Uh, here's the subject site 9th Avenue, Clareville, Whitzel. City subdivisions here, city subdivisions here. <laughs> West Haven over over on over in that location. So yeah, it is it is getting towards the western part of the of, of our growth area, but it is in it is in our growth area, and it's an area that you know we, we'd like to start seeing some of these these subdivisions start to uh, develop over the next few years. And there's a small buffer between this parcel <laughs> and the church to the east, as well as between this parcel and Clareville itself. Correct. If you see that little parcel there, and I think they've been trying to talk uh, with these particular uh, property owners <coughs> to potentially, and we've aimed some roads in that direction. Uh, so it could, this this land just to, to the east could uh, integrate into this subdivision. Um, I guess I just wanted to follow up with a question too, and that is, um, was this, if I recall, uh, did this also have some parkland dedication? Yes, they did. Could you did. point that out, maybe on the map where that is located, or to be is that yet to be determined? No, it's it's within the subdivision. So Jake, you'd have to pull up the actual plat itself. You can. Should be on Exhibit B, I think, Darren. Yeah. Just so folks can see that at home. Nope. Okay. Oh, you got it up. Okay. So. If you yeah, yeah, it's Jake. <laughs> there it is. So on the elbow. Oh, that's fine. All right. So okay. So here's Technical the, difficulties. Here's, here's, the road, here's the road. Here's the road coming in. Here's the main road coming in. So this this land here that is that is where the parkland dedication is occurring. So it looks like right in the center of the subdivision. Thank you for that visual aid. All right. So. Next, we have new resolutions. Resolution 18428 approved settlement agreement with Lowe's Inc. for property tax assessment tax years 2017 
2016 to 2018 for property located at 1075 North Washburn. Do we have anyone registered to speak on this? No one is registered. Bring it back to council for motion and second. So moved. Second. Discussion? Council Member Mugrauer. Thank you, Deputy Mayor. Um, I guess my only comments on this is, and I think we've numerous uh, ones of us have said it before, uh, it's not just the city uh, refunding tax dollars. This is the school district as well as the county, the state a little bit too, but the school district itself as part of this agreement um, will be losing uh, over $40,000 in revenue uh, because of the uh, Lowe's refund. So while that is a little bit smaller than the city's portion, it's still significant and uh, budgets are always tight and that should be taken into account that uh, this doesn't just affect the city taxpayer, it also affects the school district as well. Yes, it does. Agreed. Other discussion? Can we please take the roll? Herman? Aye. Allison Osby? Aye. Paul Mary? Aye. I'm sorry, Mugrower? Aye. Carried four. Next is resolution 18429, grant noise variance request to AT&T for construction work at North Main Street and Washington Avenue, August 18th to 19th or August 25th to 26th. Anyone registered for this item? No one is registered. Bring it back to council for a motion and a second. So moved. Second. Discussion? And Councilmember Moorauer. Yep. Um, thank you, Deputy Mayor. Um, we're obviously coming up on it. The uh, options are either this weekend or next weekend. And looking at this ordinance, excuse me, this resolution as well as uh, Ordinance 18435, um, if they were to be doing work this weekend, they should have noticed the uh, seven day window for construction already. And I haven't seen any signs on Main Street. As well as we've got farmers markets going on, and I know that was part of the issue, part of the reason for doing this potentially on a weekend, was to reduce the traffic impact for commercial traffic. Um, but we're talking about breaking up concrete, and I guess maybe you can go into a little bit more detail as to to what we're going to experience when they do this work over a weekend uh, if we approve it. Uh, the hope is to have the contractor do the saw cutting during the the. Work week, they can do that, flag traffic around to do the saw cutting to eliminate the noise from that. The noise, the, the variance also will let them start earlier than the seven o'clock normal start time so that they can do the actual breaking of the concrete in the intersection prior to the farmer's market starting. There will be construction activity at that point in time, but it won't be the concrete breaker. It will be a, a backhoe, excavation, some dump trucks. So it, while it will still certainly be noisier than a normal Saturday, the hope is that it's not going to be as obtrusive by getting some of that real heavy, hard hitting work done ahead of time. But it still will have a, uh, an impact on that because I believe the farmer's market runs right up to that intersection if memory serves. Correct. The farmer's there. market basically starts just on the north side of the intersection there, yes. Okay. And we've uh, notified them and talked with them I as to the impact that it could have on the, to the, um, Personally, no, I recall a discussion being there wasn't a lot of concern because the booths that were located down there weren't um, dependent on dust and noise wasn't going to be as much of a factor with them. Great. But I'll make sure that Ms. Um, Snell notifies the farmer's market. I think just out of common courtesy, we'll make sure that that's done. Thank you for that suggestion. Council Member Herman. Well, to follow up on Mr. Mugrower's, um, my recollection is correct. There are food vendors that are close to that intersection. They're right outside the bank. Two of them are. So um, I'm neither going to confirm nor deny that because I might, I might frequent one of those places. Well, I guess my only <laughs> thought is, is that, you know, they should be notified and really in advance. So, um, and I guess we're approving two options here in a sense. They either, if they're not ready to go the 18th, 19th, then they'll be ready to go the. 25th to 26th, is that how I read this? The intent was to allow for, in case there was inclement weather forecast okay. out there, that they didn't have to try to do it during a, a bad stretch of weather to make the work go more efficiently. Okay. All right. But yeah, I, I'm 99% sure there's food vendors right in that they, corner. There's a, there, there might be a barbecue place right over there. Mm -hmm. and that's, I'm may just or saying, may not. Maybe. May, may, or, may, may or may not. All right. 
Pete. Thank you. Councilmember McGrath. One last thing, because um, as I'm reading this, um, I just want to make sure that we're reading it right and we're seeing it right. Um, it's noted that they would give, they would post, um, post warning signs seven days prior to closure, and there's been nothing posted that I've seen. If they haven't posted it yet, then so they're, they're not working this weekend. They, but then they won't have the option of working this weekend. That's the answer I was looking for. Thank you. Nope. Perfect. There we go. All right. Any further discussion on that? Can we please take the roll? Herman. Aye. Allison Osby. Aye. Mukurauer. Aye. Paul Mary. Aye. Carried four. Next, we have pending ordinances. Ordinance 18-430, established street grades. Pickard Estates, Phase 1, North 3300 block of West 9th Avenue. And is there anyone registered to speak on that? No one is registered. Bring it back. Council for motion is second. So moved. Second. Discussion? And take the roll, please. Herman? Aye. Allison Osby? Aye. Mugurower? Aye. Paul Mary? Aye. Carried four. Next is Ordinance 18 431, authorizing public construction for Pickard Estates, Phase 1 North, 3300 block of West 9th Avenue. Anyone registered on that? No one is registered. Hand back to Council for a motion. So moved. Second. Discussion? And take the roll, please. Herman? Aye. Allison Osby? Aye. McGrower? Aye. Paul Mary? Aye. Carried four. Next, we have Ordinance 18432, approved closure of 9th Street Road, West 9th Avenue from Linden Oaks Drive to the proposed Paul's Place. Is there anyone here registered to speak on that? No one is registered. And back to Council for a motion and second. So moved. Second. And discussion. Councilmember Mugrauer? I think I just have one correction. I believe I caught a, maybe a date issue that needs to be just updated within there. Section 3, um, line 6, it says that we approved, approved the ordinance on August 9th, 2018. I think today's the 15th. Other than that, that's my only correction. It will be updated. Perfect. Any further discussion? Can we take the roll? Do I need to? Do I need a waiver of the rules? Not this one. Oh, I'm sorry. Okay. Herman? Any for, oh, sorry, go ahead. <laughs> okay, sorry. <All> right. <laughs> we noted the correction that will be taken care of. Yes. And, all right. So I don't think we need to amend it. So. Perfect. Um, aye. Allison Osby? Aye. Mugerower? Aye. Paul Mary? Aye. Carried four. Uh, next, we have new ordinances. Um, let's see. The first one, there's there's no ac uh, anticipated formal action taken on any of these items at the at the meeting. So we'll go with 18.433, adopt general retention disposition schedules pertaining to police department records and telephone and video surveillance records related to city facilities and amend public records ordinance to include definitions and clarify provisions pertaining to city audits. Pam, is there anyone registered on this item? No one is registered. All right, there's no action on that, so we will move on to, let's see here. Do we have any discussion? No. We're not taking the roll. So next is ordinance 18.434. Approved zone change from institutional to institutional with planned development overlay IPD for property located at 1331 High Avenue. Plan Commission recommends approval. And is there anyone registered for this item? No one is registered. Okay, no further discussion. Any discussion on this? And then finally, new ordinance. 18-435, approved temporary closure of North Main Street at Washington Avenue for construction work August 18th, 19th, or August 25th, 26th. Wait a minute. We just we just did that one. Oh, no. <laughs> We've got to wave the rules on this Different. one. All right. This is just the closure of the street. <clears throat> the closure of the street. 
Um, so there will be two votes here. First um, vote will be uh, based on staff recommending waiving the rules and adopting on the first reading. Is there anyone that would like to speak to that? No one is registered. Bring it back for a motion and a second on waiving the rules and adopting on first reading. I move that we waive the rules and adopt on the first reading. Second. Uh, discussion? All right. And take the roll on waiving the rules. Waiving the rules. Herman? Aye. Alice Nosby? Aye. Mugurower? Aye. Paul Mary? Aye. Carried four. So the second part of that would be to then approve that temporary closure of North Main Street at again Washington Avenue for construction work August 18th or 19th or 25th, 26th. So moved. Second. Discussion. And take the roll, please. Herman? Aye. Allison Osby? Aye. Hoogerower? Aye. Paul Mary? Aye. Carried four. Next, we have council discussion, direction to city manager, and future agenda items. And turn that over to city manager Rolla. Thank you, uh, Deputy Mayor Palmieri. Uh, there's one item listed, and then I'm going to just a brief council on another one that uh, Deputy Mayor Palmieri and I were quite active with today. Uh, first off, just a reminder uh, next week is our budget workshop on Wednesday at 5 p.m. Uh, this will be the, the second of our budget workshops. The uh, topics we're going to be doing an uh, update on our audit for 2017, as well as uh, some additional forecasting uh, that we want to provide with council. Uh, the other one has to do with Oregon Street, under construction right now. And uh, as a result of some of the construction, to get ourselves compliant, we haven't changed the the profile as the council directed no change in the profile but because of the need to get lanes more compliant with truck turning radius and things like that uh, stacking uh, staffs had to make some changes to the painting of the lines where council comes in with that is council approves any changes in parking and as Ms. Palmieri will attest to uh, the paintings have already gone out there most of the time we bring this to council before the project's done and we should have and we didn't we need to get it for council to get it to council for their approval because uh, the roads are ready to open up in this area and the parking is more restrictive than currently exists and for us to be able to enforce that uh, but uh, as Ms. Palmieri can attest to we've received a lot of uh, inquiries about this and I've asked staff to take a look at what we can do uh, because Parking obviously is, is something very important to the residents. You heard from them uh, during your uh, deliberations on what the width was going to be. Um, you know, I've taken a look at it. It's probably important to take a look at ways to make it uh, better turning for safety purposes and things like that. But the practical side of it is you know as well as anybody how important parking is out to those folks. Uh, so I think we need to bring that. Well, I know we need to bring that back because council would have to excuse me, adopt an ordinance. So we'll be bringing that back. I'm not sure if it's necessarily going to be the next meeting um, because Mr. Godey has to go out and make sure that what actually got constructed matches up with um, uh, the, the drawings. And sometimes the drawings and what's actually done kind of change up a little bit. So we want to make sure if we're going to start tweaking some of the plans, we want to make sure that uh, council's fully aware of what those are. Maybe on the 28th, it may actually step into September. But just wanted to make you aware of it. You may get some calls from, from some of the businesses primarily along up and down Oregon Street, although I think the deputy mayor has had, a, had her fill of those already today. So you may hear about those. And we're going to give you a little update in uh, this week's newsletter. Council Member Herman. Um, question, Mr. Olaf. Traditionally, these go back through our boards and commissions. So should the bike and pet be brought up to speed? Should the traffic review parking commission be? Or are we sidestepping them because of where we are in the project? I would say that it would be appropriate to take it to uh, traffic and Traffic parking, for sure. Traffic and because parking. Bike and pet, it's not a bike and pet route. So I would say no to that. Okay. But I think it's a valid point, And we may need to take a look at our schedule. and. It may be appropriate to get them on board with that. You know, you recall like North Main Street, 
Right. We went through that whole process, and right. and it, it I think it went well because we were very engaged early on in the process. So yeah. uh, I appreciate. I mean, I, I you know that. I went out there today after I was notified about the issue, and and I can see why they took that parking away, but at the same time, that isn't what you know the minutes said and things, and you know. I know it's a truck route, so that, that is an issue in and of itself, but then um, as several of us have been talking, you know, there were businesses that said that trucks have to park right in front of their business. Well, they got no parking in front of their business. It's gonna be pretty hard to unload their semis at some of those businesses, so. Um, and is it wide enough? I mean, we had this discussion about Jackson Street. We couldn't put a designated left turn lane in. This street seems to be a whole lot narrower, and we're looking at putting a designated left turn lane in. Well, that was, you can put a designated left turn lane in, but the impact's gonna be on the parking. And we've lived with it this way, and, um, but it hasn't been ideal. And right. I think we've seen those situations where uh, you've seen trucks turn yeah. left one way or, you know, either right. going on or off the nine. And it's pretty tough pretty to do difficult. that. It is, so um, that, so I think we need some time to get those to you, but I appreciate the point about Traffic. I think we traffic, do need to run it by back to traffic committee bit. as well. Yeah. So thank you for that. Because if we have to change the parking ordinance, they should. That committee should weigh in on that. Yeah. So, so we have at least two council members that were aware of it before before I announced it. <laughs> and I guess I just would follow up with uh, one other question, um, so that the businesses are made aware. Um, they were planning, I believe, on the street opening up at least in some sections here in the next couple of days, this will not delay the street opening up, correct? I won't let paint get in the way of opening up a street. If there was a hole in the street, that'd be one thing. Paint is, there'll be a little inconvenience with the parking because it's gonna look like you can't park in those areas. Legally, you know, we can't enforce that, but I'd encourage people to, to make do with what the paint job is out there and depending on what council decides on, that's what we're gonna do, and I think you're gonna to wanna to take a look at some options. I just know you're gonna to wanna to take a look at some options. So I appreciate your indulgence with that. All right. That's all I have. So next is our second opportunity for citizen statements to council. Do we have anyone registered? We do not. All right. And on to, let's see, we don't have any council member Announcements or statements, um, so we'll go on to city manager announcements and statements. Uh, thank you, Deputy Mayor. Uh, item 34 is really just to uh, follow up on something we had brought to council's attention about. Somebody expressed an interest in doing some pedal pubs, <coughs> and I had indicated in a newsletter a couple weeks ago that it would be on this week's agenda. Um, there are a few things we need to work out to get the ordinance in reviewable form for the council. The person who is interested in it is aware of this and is okay. We've, we've got to work out some things and uh, he's still in the process. He just wants to know that we're, we're moving towards this. By law, uh, we don't have to adopt an ordinance. State law will, will swoop in and it'll be covered, but it won't really address local concerns with that. So what we'd like to do is make sure that we have an ordinance that we can live with. So yes, thank you, Jake. We have some examples because I, even though it's not on the agenda this time, people are saying, what are pedal pubs? Those are pedal pubs. We don't have a capital in downtown Oshkosh, but this is an example of what uh, these would look like. And obviously, they're pretty good size, so it's not just that, it's not like a little, you know, um, like tandem bicycle or anything. This is the size of a full-size vehicle, like a van. Uh, so we wanna make sure that we're uh, accommodating all the factors in there. Um, these don't go as fast as cars, and they're gonna be going through the downtown area where there's a lot of vehicles, and uh, I mean, somebody mentioned earlier, it's a little tight in the downtown. Mm -hmm. They're gonna be going, we wanna make sure that we put them in the right spots, and those are the things that we're working through. So when we uh, bring this back, I think we'll be in a position where the person who would like to do this um, is gonna be understanding and comfortable where we're at. Police are gonna be comfortable where we're at, so um, look for that uh, in an upcoming meeting. So I guess I'm, I'm just kind of curious, is, is um, perhaps Attorney Lawrence can answer this, does this require, or, or Clerk um, Uberig, does this require a, a liquor license or? 
no. no. But, uh, go ahead. They don't actually, they cannot serve on the, the vehicle, but you can bring your own refreshments. It's bring your yeah. own from a so licensed establishment. Mm -hmm. So then if we have our establishments that serve alcohol and there's no carry out beyond the fencing, is this going to address the in between the establishment serving and the pedal pub? The open intoxicants? They can use and the it. chief left. <laughs> oh, of course he did. <clears throat> I haven't seen that specifically addressed in any of the other ordinances. It's, I mean, as you point out, there would be that walk across the, <laughs> the sidewalk to get onto it. I, we reviewed all of the other um, municipalities that haven't, I haven't seen anybody else addressing that. They do have the ability to, you know, bring your own on. Um, you could leave it capped and do it there, you know, uncap mm -hmm. it once you get on or something as well. So it, it just has not been an issue that I've really seen addressed. Um, and I'm not sure how the police department would, would yeah. deal with that, but. Sure. Those right. are the, obviously the details we're working yeah. through right now. So oh. that's that, and uh, yeah. Councilmember Osby has a question. Yeah. So, um, no, actually, just a comment. Um, I've traveled quite a bit to cities that have the pedal pubs, and um, and in having discussions, um, I've had a, an opportunity to talk to a few. Actually, to be honest, there is significant liability for the person that operates the um, the pedal pub and with their insurance, and typically most policies are that they have the right to refuse anybody on you know their their pedal pub and they certainly do so they almost enforce it better than anybody else can um i will say the cities that i've traveled that have them um i've not seen a sad patron <laughs> on any of them and typically they're waving and singing and having a good time and sometimes that has actually been the first thing i've seen you know, upon being in a downtown area. So it's it's kind of unique. It's certainly a unique business concept. More to come on that. And then the uh, Oshkosh Corp update is in your packet. If you have any questions, happy to answer those. But other than that, that's all I have. Oh, I guess we'll entertain then a motion to adjourn. So moved. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye.